Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. So the topic for today is why did two of the same speakers sound so differently in a two-way versus a three-way? I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please Lord give me a sign so, I, you know, I was curious. So I've got both of these sets of the same line of focals, one in a three-way, one in a two-way. And they sound pretty different, even though the drivers are virtually identical, except for the addition of a mid-range. So... Let's dissect these things and let's check out why, why they sound different. And then we'll go ahead and stick them on the bench and we'll listen to them. All right, so we got the Focal two ways here on the bottom and three ways mounted here on the top. And we're going to play these things and you're going to see the distinct difference in how these things sound when they're composed of virtually the same drivers for the most part. So let's give them a whirl and Baby, the two ways. Alright, there's no EQ applied, this is just straight. Baby, you me That's the three way. That's a three way again. What do you think? Okay, right off the bat, you can see these drivers. These drivers are identical. The only difference is this is the two. These are the two-way components on this side. These are the three-way components on this side. The difference is the two-way has a phase plug. Apparently, a phase plug is used to help direct the sound. Okay, maybe they found something in the two-way that it was beneficial to do that versus just a dust cap. Okay, so. We look at these drivers. These things are the same. Same plastic baskets. Same connectors, same everything. So the the mid the the mid what we're going to call the mid ranges woofers are the same okay then we go to the tweeters and and there is the tweeters are identical in fact i had to mark this one this is from the two-way this is from the three-way they are absolutely 100 percent identical so the difference is we've added this three inch mid-range okay these are mid woofers this is a mid-range okay and it's constructed really just the same as, as, the, as the other one. Same cone material, same cap, same surround, you know, same plastic basket. Although it is a little bit different color. This one's more black than it is than these other ones. So that's kind of interesting. So what I found, the big difference is in the crossovers. The crossovers on these component speakers really have a lot to do with the sound of the speakers as opposed to the speakers themselves. Sounds crazy. I, I'm blown away myself, you know, that it doesn't, you know, holy cow. So, you know, so this is the three-way. three, three way. This is the two-way, okay? So we've got three... 
It's got 3.3 microfarads and 3.8 microfarads for these and, and some differences in the in the coil. So these coils do two things. So when they're run in parallel, they change the crossover from a 6 dB to a 12 dB. And when they're run in series, they are actually used to remove high frequencies from the driver. So what I'm assuming is this crossover here is for, most likely it is for the the, the mid, the small mid range. And it this one also might be for the big one to remove high frequencies from these. And on this one, I'm not sure we're removing any high frequencies from the mid range. And you go, well, that's crazy. But guess what? I talked to Image Dynamics and they, because I have a set of their crossovers, and I said, hey, it doesn't look like we're in, in essence band passing the, the, the mid woofer, right? Meaning we're, we're crossing it over to take the low frequencies out of it, but we're not taking anything out of the high frequencies. And they told me, well, a lot of mid-range woofers have a roll-off of around 3,000 hertz, and that is, you know, exactly where you're going to cross over in, in a lot of cases, your tweeter. So, there is no high-range crossover on a lot of these two-way setups. I'm not saying that that none of them... But some of them, that's how they do it. Probably on some of the cheaper speakers. I don't know if you've seen some of the lesser quality speakers where they just have an inline capacitor on the tweeter and there's nothing going to the, to the mid-range. I've seen that um, lots of times. So interesting enough, um, you know, we break these things down. And one of the ways that you can, you can adjust the sound of these is with attenuation. And that's what these resistors do. So these are resistors are in here to give you different levels. And generally speaking, they're for the tweeters, okay? And, and obviously on a two-way, that would be the only thing you would do. So so this one has three three resistors for the, the different settings for the tweeter here. This one does the same thing. Now, I do have some three-way sets, which is really cool, that you also have attenuation for the mid-woofer, the tweeter and the mid-woofer, so you can really dial them in. And so you're going to find that when, you know, when we play these things, they're going to sound so differently. And a lot of it is because of what we're doing with the frequencies. And I'm going to go over that right now and give you kind of a visual representation of what we're doing with the frequencies. All right. So what we've got here is kind of a, kind of a graph, okay, of, 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 what your speakers are doing. And this is really what would be considered a two-way setup while there's three curves on here. Okay, here's the tweeter, okay? This is what the tweeter's doing, okay? And we're gonna assume here based on, this is 5,000, this is 2,000, we're gonna base it on that most likely the tweeter is being crossed over at somewhere around 3,000, or 3K, okay? So this is the tweeter crossover, okay? Here's the here's the mid woofer right here. Okay, it's just kind of hard to see these lines. That's why I'm drawing them in, okay? So here's your, your mid woofer, okay? And we're gonna look at that and we're gonna go, hey, you know, that mid woofer is crossed over at, you know, somewhere around a thousand. 1K, and then it's also crossed over, you know, somewhere, you know, in the, wherever you're going to cross it over. Because generally speaking, um, in your system, the, the passive crossover isn't going to cross over the low end of the midwoofer on a two-way, okay? So generally speaking, so here's 100 hertz. Generally speaking, I would cross, you know, these midwoofers, and the way I usually do it is about 80 hertz. So this thing would actually go more kind of like this over over in this range. So now you've got a curve here and a curve here. And then you go, well, there's a dip here. Well, the reason why there is a dip here and the reason why 
the crossover frequencies don't necessarily match each other is because when you sum these together, meaning playing them at the same time, what you would what you would actually get would be a boost right here. So there is a red line. If you look closely, this is actually when you sum them together, what you get. Okay, and if these cross these crossover points here and here were were at the same point, then what you'd do is this: the actual frequency response when you played them would be a a rise. It'd be a you know like that. So this is a two-way, and then here would be, you know, your, your subwoofer coming in, you know, here. And so one of the things that, you know, like I said, adding these coils do is they change it from 6 dBs per octave to 12 dBs. And what that does is it changes this roll-off slope from something like, you know, something like this. This would be like 24. This would be 12. 6 would be, you know, more like this. And so... If we change the slope of these, this peak here would probably would would it wouldn't be it would be a peak. It, right now it's flat, but you'd probably get a, a peak. So so that's why it's kind of critical. So the difference is so this is a two way. So let's say we had a three way. <laughs> that sounds kind of crazy, but anyway. So we'll see if we can put a different color on here. So if we had a three way, what we're going to end up doing is is taking our tweeter and we're going to cross it over lower. Okay. And then we're going to take our mid-range and we're going to kind of do a similar thing. And we're going to go, you know, here. Okay. And then we're going to have our mid-woofer. Okay. So our mid-woofer is going to come in. So this one's going to roll off kind of like this, kind of a shape and then we're gonna have a midwoofer that's gonna roll in like this okay so we've got this guy here is our mid our, our midwoofer here's our mid range and here is our tweeter okay so we've moved crossover points to here and here versus here and here. So our new crossover points are these ones I'm circling. So what essentially we're doing is we're, we're crossing over our tweeter and it's playing a shorter range. Okay, we're taking our mid woofer and we're making it play a shorter range. And then we're introducing this guy in the middle and what you're trying to do accomplish with that is you're trying to make each driver do less of the work so they can perform at their peak, okay? And that's really the key of it is, is trying to have a, a frequency range for your drivers where they're most happy. So the least amount of frequency range that a speaker needs to do, probably the better it's gonna sound, okay? Now that's not always true, but some most of the time it probably is true. And so that's why I think, you know, with these passive crossovers and all these things, um, a DSP is like the way to go, 100%. Because what you can do with a DSP is you can move these crossover points wherever you want. You can change the slope of them however you want. And you can also take the whole level of each, each one of these slopes is on a different channel. So you can actually take each one and attenuate it just like you can on here, but much better, you know, and move them up and down and balance them. So, you know, I really think that's the wave of the future is, is integrated amplifiers with amplifiers with integrated DSPs. All right. So what do you guys think? Just curious. So I've learned a lot by testing all these speakers and different things and talking to some of the manufacturers and, and taking some of these crossovers apart and playing around with them. Um, you know, I really think, you know, like I mentioned, the DSP is really the future. And, you know, I really can't wait till maybe there's head units with built-in DSPs. I know they've got crossovers and they've got EQs, but they really don't have enough channel outputs. You know, you really need something with, you know, eight, 10 channels of output um, to do all that. 
And I, you know, I think that's the future. And, and I think there's a lot of good speakers out there that with a DSP sound great. And we've got a video coming up with the JLC sevens and, and those things are meant, they don't even come with crossovers and, and stuff and they're uber high end ish, I guess. I don't know. They're expensive, but, um, so, you know, really the point of me doing a lot of these speaker tests are, Hey, if these speakers sound good right out of the box with a passive crossover, man, with the DSP, you know, it, they're going to sound amazing. You know, you can only really dial them in even better. So I think when I put them on the bench, if they sound like crap, um, which we've had some, I think, you know, a DSP might help them. But if they sound good already, just right out of the box, I think that's the way to go. And these Focals, you know, while they're fairly budget-ended speakers, you know, I think they sound pretty good. Um, I do think that the, the three-way sounds better than the two-way. But again, like I've seen this before in, in a lot of two ways and three ways where, you know, sometimes around that two, three thousand hertz on, on a two way, they're a little bit, a little bit much. And that's that crossover point, you know, and, and I think that's the biggest problem is that, that, that woofer at, you know, that 3000, 3K range it's a bit harsh and our ears are really sensitive at that point too. You know, I think that's, that's one of the reasons why is our ears really, you know, that, that, that really rings with a, with a, in our ears, that 3000 Hertz. So, you know, an EQ can help tone that down to your preference. And again, this comes down to preference. You know, everybody wants a chart and everybody wants a, these are the definitive numbers. But again, really I can measure these things with, you know, million dollars in equipment. It's not going to happen, but you know what? Use your ears, seriously, you know? Listen to different systems. You know, step away from your system, come back, because you'll get acclimated to it. I mean, I had a friend come by the other day, you know, hey, check out my system. And I was like, hey, something's wrong. He goes, what do you mean? I said, you know, this speaker down here on this side, like everything's coming from right there, what's up? And you know, he comes back next day and goes, oh man, I had some speakers backwards and some other stuff. So, um, you know, get the install right done, EQ it, and you know, you'll get it right and make it sound good. But you know, again, you know, the point of these videos is to weed out the, the bad ones and maybe find some hidden gems. And we've got some new speakers coming up that we're gonna test that I think are, are you know, in the reach of most of, of you viewers. And we've got some that are like crazy, crazy expensive, you know, that, that I'm really thankful to get the opportunity to test. So make sure you like, subscribe and all that cool stuff. And I appreciate you guys watching. Catch you next time.